this is how to set up a WordPress site in 10 minutes or less. So this is me. I'm Rafael Marquez. I forgot to start my little camera thing. Sorry about that. I, I record everything. So. Uh, this is me, Rafael Marquez. That's my Twitter name. That's my main business blog. That's my personal blog. If you guys want to come and check it out and hang out, read, leave comments, what have you, that's where you can usually find me at. Okay, so uh, a couple other things about me. I'm a webmaster. Been using WordPress since 2005. I'm an amateur ghost hunter. So I watch all these ghost hunting shows on TV, and I'm totally into that stuff. Uh, had an SEO firm with another person, and I'm a Mac head. That's my Mac on my head. Took that picture on the plane. <laughs> I needed some of this. Represent me as a Mac head. Now, this is really for you if you are a fairly new person online. You either have a blog somewhere, you have a website, or you're thinking about putting a website up. Um, you have a message that you want to get out to people, but maybe you're a little overwhelmed. You don't know where to start, what to do first. Uh, maybe you sat through a bunch of the other sessions and you're confused about where do I start, what do I do, how do I get this going. Uh, so hopefully today I'll be able to give you some step-by-step -step instruction on how to get your blog up. Also, give you a 10,000 foot overview of, of some other concepts that you should think about before you even put your website up. Um, I don't know if you guys were in the podcasting session. Uh, those guys explained it really well, where you want to own all of your stream, and you don't want to be dependent on some other company allowing you to use their services for your stream and your data. Uh, so. I'll be getting into some of that here in a little bit. So we can go ahead and get started with the meat of the presentation. So like what I was saying, before you put bit to byte to put up your website, um, you need to think about the five hows. Okay. So there's five things that you should think about before you even start looking into doing your site. Okay, the first one is, how are you going to be found? And this involves things like your SEO, your keywords. Um, if you have, I'll use ghost hunting as an example just because it's one of my hobbies. So if you're going to put up a website for ghost hunting in Pittsburgh, so you're going to start a ghost hunt tour or something like that, you'll want to find out what kind of words people are typing in when they're looking for a ghost hunt tour. That's what a keyword is. So you want to do some research about that. If you just go to Google, type in keywords, the first two, the first one is the Google keyword tool, and the second one is usually the free keyword tool from Word Tracker. Either one of those will get you started in the right direction. And you just type in the keyword of whatever it is that you want to talk about. Um, so if I were to word ghost hunting, then I would type in ghost hunting Pittsburgh. It would give me a list of words that I can pick from and take it from there. The other thing is, how are you going to be remembered? So what about your site makes it worthwhile for someone to remember you when they come to the site? Is it your content? Is it your branding? And it goes just beyond your colors and your logos. It's what about you makes me want to come back to your site to read more about what it is that you're talking about. Next, how is um, how are you organized? So if, for instance, if you're a photographer, uh, are you going to organize your pictures by the topic that you're photographing, like buildings, or if you're a wedding photographer, is it you know, all these outdoor weddings versus indoor weddings versus what have you? Um, for my sort of theoretical example about a ghost hunting site, it would probably be uh, hunts in outdoors, like in cemeteries, versus hunts indoors in the church or something like that. Next thing is, how is your site performing? Um, is it meeting the goals that you have set out for you? And what this encompasses is uh, your, your tracking for your analytics. You can either use the WordPress stats plugin, or you can use uh, Google Analytics. 
And those are both free. There's some other ones that you can pay for, but those two free ones will get you started. And uh, you know, they'll tell you things like, where are your visitors coming from? How long are they staying on your site? How many pages do they look at before they leave? Uh, they'll also tell you things like, um, are they, we talked about this briefly yesterday, in one of the other sessions, the bounce rate. How long do they stay on your site before they leave to go somewhere else? Uh, and these are all things that you can use to sort of track, better track and optimize your website so that you're, number one, so you can meet your goals, and two, so you can meet the goals of the people that are coming to your site as well. So if they're finding what they're looking for, they're likely to stick around more and subscribe and come back to the site time and time again. And that leads into the next point, which is how are you retaining your readers? So what are you, are you using an email subscription? Like you have a little email box on your site, sign up here to get email updates. So every time you update the site, you send them an email automatically. There's a service called Aweber that does that for you. And then you just link the Aweber to your blog, and whenever you update your blog, it, send, it automatically sends out an email to everyone that subscribes. You can also just do that through your RSS feed on the website as well. But this is, in the, in the beginning, this might be just too much to even think about, but these are things to consider for on down the road after you have your site up and running for a little bit. So Frogger is a little acronym that I thought of. So how you found, remembered, organized, your goals, and then retain. So that's my goal. Think Frogger whenever you're putting up the site. And while we're, one of the things that, that this is set up for and that I want to talk about are if you, for you to buy your own domain so that you're not dependent on some other company. So let me give you some ideas about your domain guidelines. So how to pick, how to pick a good domain name or something that'll, that'll work for you. And these are just generic guidelines. They'll work for just about any any kind of topic. You want to think about your elevator pitch. So imagine that you, you meet somebody, you're at one of these things, you're in the elevator, they ask you, hey, what do you do? Oh, I've got a blog about ghost hunting in Pittsburgh. Oh, cool, what's your website? You want to be able to have something that's short enough that you can tell them that they're likely to remember, but also easy enough that you, it'll just roll off your tongue when you tell them. Is if you tell them ghosthuntpittsburgh.blogspot.com slash whatever, nobody will remember that. It's too long. Other things, no hyphens. If you tell somebody ghost-tour-pittsburgh.com, they don't know if you mean these dashes or if you mean the underscore. And people are never going to remember that. It's easier to read that than it is to read that. But this is a better domain out of these three. It's all together, all lowercase, all nothing fancy or, or anything like that about it. And you can tell somebody else, go to Pittsburgh.com if you want to do anything like that here. Okay. Yeah. Another thing is business card test. Will it fit on a business card? Can you read it easily enough on a business card? You want to put your keywords in it if possible. Remember, it was Ghost Tour Pittsburgh. So what do I run? I run a ghost tour company where in Pittsburgh. So I have all of my keywords in that. Um, if your keywords, if you can't use your keywords because everybody else has already taken it, your company name is fine. Um, but it's better to have your keywords in it than your company name. Because really nobody looks for um, what, was a, what was the example I was thinking of? Nobody really looks for uh, Betty's dry cleaners. They look for dry cleaner in such and such neighborhood, or dry cleaners in Austin, or dry cleaners in Pittsburgh. They look for that. They don't ever really look for your name. So you want to have your keywords in there, or at least have your keyword in the description of your site so that people know, and, and the search engines know how to organize you in their app. Uh, and their search results. Where do you buy a keyword? Uh, these are some of the places where you can go buy it. Uh, GoDaddy is the biggest domain name registrar. I recommend only buying a domain name from them. Don't buy hosting. 
from them. Don't buy any of the other stuff that they'll try to sell you. They have an easy 18-step checkout program. So for about 18 pages, they'll say, hey, buy this. Hey, you should buy this. Hey, you should buy the other thing. So just ignore all that stuff. Just go right through to the checkout. Don't buy anything but the domain name from them. Other places are Namecheap, DirectNick, your hosting provider will also sell you a domain name. Uh, so if you like uh, Bluehost or HostGator or any of those guys for hosting, you can buy your domain name directly from them as well. And you're looking at about $7 to $15 per year, depending on the registrar that you buy from for a .com. There are some other specialty, quote unquote, Domains like a .info right now, they have it on sale for, I think it's 89 cents for the first year, and then it's $11 the next year and the years after that. Uh, if you want a .tv, it's like $35 or something like that. Curious, why would you use GoDaddy for hosting? Well, among other things, their hosting is really slow. Uh, I've had, I had a client that had GoDaddy and I was basically just going off of what other people were telling me until I had a client that had GoDaddy for hosting and then I had to deal with them for hosting and then it's like, yeah, definitely don't deal with GoDaddy for hosting. Just buy the domain from them and host it somewhere else. Yes, sir. Assume I know nothing. Yes, sir. Okay. What am I, from my 7 to $15, what exactly what am I getting? You're getting the yourdomainname.com. So in my example, let's go to Pittsburgh. For with the GoDaddy, it's 1069 with tax. So for my 1069, I buy the name GhostTourPittsburgh.com and just the name. Does that give you the ability, for example, to set up or run your email accounts, things of that sort? Depending on your hosting provider, yes. So my hosting is, did I mention that in one of the other slides? Um, through GoDaddy. If you, if you stay with GoDaddy to get your email account, they're going to charge you $4.95 to send emails per, per month. Per month? Per month. If you, want to have, uh, if you want to add other services to your account, like if you want, for instance, if you wanted to have uh, 10, 12 email addresses under your domain, then they'll charge you, I think it's $4.95 for the first one, and then $0.95 cents for each additional one per month. And each of those companies has the ability to do that? Yes. And when they, okay, when I send an email to whatever your email address is, it's being mm -hmm. posted by GoDaddy, what happens to that email? It sits on their server until you bring it back, or it gets forwarded to you, or what? It's similar to how it works with the company, with, at your company, that your company has mail servers that receive all of the email for you. Uh, the GoDaddy servers then would work as the equivalent of your company email where they receive the mail and they keep it. You can go within GoDaddy and then automatically forward that email to another address. Um, so for instance, if you have a Gmail account or something like that, you can automatically set any email that comes into this email address, auto forward it to my Gmail account. And you can set that up. Um, I don't know if they charge that store for that. Uh, but they might. The host that I use is called HostGator. And yeah. HostGator, uh, I like them for several reasons. One, they have like a 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee. They have 24-7 uh, support. And you can talk to them either by email, phone, or chat. And I just chat with them you know, if there's something that's really broken. I just chat them real quick and they usually fix it. It takes them maybe 30 minutes to fix it. And how do they have prices compared to some of these other companies? I have, it depends on what kind of account you get. The account that I have has unlimited everything. So unlimited uh, storage space on the servers, unlimited bandwidth. So anytime somebody comes to your website and requests a page, that counts against your bandwidth allotment. And there's no limit for that on, uh, on HostGator. So if you have your podcast or video or whatever hosted on there, doesn't matter how many people hit it. If it's uh, one person or if it's 10,000, it costs you the same. And so that's one of the reasons why I pay 
$9.95 per month. Per month. For all of that stuff. For, for all of email, for Yes, sir. For emails on my same account, I can have unlimited uh, subdomains. So I've got about maybe 30 or 40 different websites that I manage, and they're all under my one account, and I don't pay any extra. For and they give you space, for example, for a website or mm -hmm. stuff. Yes. So there is the web files, the audio files, video, pictures, whatever you want. It all fits under the one account. But they don't host you, do they? They host you. They host you too. So that was my question. My, I was going to ask. Uh, you were saying you don't. Um, you wouldn't recommend necessarily go to a different hosting. I understand that. But some of the companies that you would recommend for hosting also you can purchase your domain name from. So what would be the advantage or disadvantage if I went to Bluehost or, or I host here? There's an advantage, really, maybe, to buying. Is there an advantage to buying your name through them? The, the biggest advantage would be that there's only, you're only dealing with one vendor. Mm -hmm. So the same company that owns the domain name also owns, I'm sorry, not owns the domain name because you own it. The same company that registers the domain name also hosts it. So you're only having to remember one login, one password, one everything. Because it's just the one place that you're going to. Uh, if you have it split up, like with GoDaddy and with uh, HostGator, you have to remember your host, your GoDaddy login, and then you have to remember your HostGator login as well. Um, so it's double things that you need to remember. The advantage of having them separate is if, let's say, for instance, if you don't like HostGator. Uh, let's just say something happens and you just don't like them anymore and you want to move somewhere else. You don't have to deal with HostGator at all anymore. You just deal with the other company if you have them split up. But for the registration, you always have to go back to the original company that you bought it from in order to re-register the domain. You can move it to another company, but there's all kinds of rules and things that you need to, all different hoops to jump That's through. That's what they're talking about. Yeah. There's a problem. Or if there's a problem with a company, just right. their business or whatever, right. and then you have to start from scratch if right. you've got it all together. Right. Okay. So I like splitting, splitting it up so that no one company is in charge of everything. But that's just my personal. And he's preference. frugal, so he doesn't like to pay too much. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's cheaper. One of my accounts, I changed the name. I had services. I changed the domain name, okay? And the hosting, I have no problems with that. Uh, they call it per organization here at 24 hours, there's no problem, sir. But this goes through the PHP scripting for the templates I purchase. Mm -hmm. And they base communication on the tickets, you know, telephone numbers, you know, they can wow. you in, in two hours, on, on three days, two hours. How I can deal with them that I would like to stay because they are absolutely beautiful design in the flash. I used to design in Flash, but there's too much going on now, so I use the templates now. And then design. Um, how can I might host somehow uh, communicate with them, send me the, the different name, different because my my one of the websites is down now because of, of the template? I don't know that the host could do that for you, but you could probably do that yourself. Give them a call and say, hey, I'd like to get this thing, or so if they even make that available. Because it could just be, and, and you know, obviously it's their own business, how they want to handle it. Uh, but if they want to do it only for people that are subscribed to their service, then it's their prerogative to do it like that. But they might be willing to sell you the template for you to use. Oh, the other one, of course, they do. Somewhere else, but um, I don't know that I understood the question. Usually that, you know, the hosting is fine, and the main is the registration is fine, absolutely great, but if you want to purchase it, like, very sick of, mm -hmm. you know, based on the, on the flash, you can buy them, communication with them is slow. Well, so they can change the script in PHP, you know, so they can get the hosting. And there's a way that you can do a redirect, so that, um, but we can talk about that after the session. Um, because it'll make it look, somebody goes to 
domain A, but it's inside the server window, the window is really grabbing the page from a domain from a different domain. We can talk about that after after the session. But because it's kind of off topic. You mentioned the uh, they work with you with the ticket or uh, like if you have a technical problem, how uh, communicate with them? They'll give you a ticket if they have to escalate. Otherwise, they're on you until it's fixed. So you'll stay online with them. Mm -hmm. You'll be on the phone. They'll fix it before you hang up. And if they can't fix it before they hang up, then they'll give you a ticket number because it's going up to the tier two level. And then they will fix it. Uh, I've never had an issue that tier two hasn't been able to fix. And I do some weird stuff, and I'm always breaking things just because that's what I do. I break things. <laughs> And tier two has been able to fix it every time, so I'm I'm quite happy with them for you know for the foreseeable future. Is there anything you could say positively or not about some of those other companies? That's just a Um Yeah, uh, GoDaddy is really fast once you buy the domain name. There's this other thing that happens behind the scenes that's called. Well, it's called BNS propagation, and you might hear it from other people. And what that means is that whenever somebody, let's say I go to GoDaddy and I buy ghosthuntpittsburgh.com right now. GoDaddy has to tell all these other servers around the world called domain name servers, or BNS servers. Anytime anybody in your neighborhood types in pittsburghghosttour.com, send them to this page. And that takes a while to do. Because there's a lot of those domain servers throughout the world. So getting that propagation out so that anybody, anywhere, when they type in that search, it comes to my page, usually takes 24 to 48 hours. GoDaddy, the last time they did it in three hours. Um, Namecheap is pretty good. DirectNet also. Uh, these guys, they'll usually do it maybe 12, 24 hours or so. Uh, but you're looking, that's going to be something that's going to keep you from being able to go up right away. Uh, but usually, it'll take them about, you know, 24 to 48 hours. But they provide all those other services in terms of hosting and yes. whatever. Make sure you that you read what it is that you're buying. Because when you're, as you're going through the checkout process, it'll tell you, you know, this, what you're buying now is this. And then they'll, they'll want to, like when you go buy a car, they'll start adding stuff to it. You know, hey, you want the floor mats at say Toyota? Oh, okay, how about floor mats at say whatever? You don't need that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. But they won't ask you, hey, do you need tires? Because it comes with the tires, right? And so they'll, it comes with the DNS service propagation. It comes with all these different things. That you, but you don't need to buy anything else. From, actually, from any of these guys. Um, I had a client that used to have direct link for everything. And DirectNIC is also is also pretty good. What I don't like about them is that it's fifteen dollars to buy the domain name from them, and then if you want forwarded things, it's five dollars for everything that you forward. And I'm just not crazy about paying extra for things that should be included, or that I feel should be included. Anyway. Um, so the company that you deal with hosts all that stuff, whatever, it does it ten bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Ten bucks a month. I was going to say I do agree a lot. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not doing this game. I do keep these separate. I do websites for people. Yeah. One thing I do like about code, go to that person, some of the people that they don't automatically do deal with you. So many people forget to read their name and then they use it. Mm -hmm. And it's a pain to try to get it back. Yes. You miss that open window. So all my stuff is like on automatic code. Because you guys only want to like $7 or $8. Mm -hmm. And you have an automatic do that. Yeah, that, that's a really good point that I forgot to mention. I don't usually auto renew stuff because sometimes I'll buy a domain for one or two years and I'll just pay it up front for the one or the two years. And then maybe, I don't know, whatever happens and I just let the domain go. Uh, like I had a client that had a coffee shop, the coffee shop went out of business. And so I didn't want to pay them to renew the thing. It would have auto renewed had I not set it to cut off. So I didn't have to pay for that. No. But so these are just basic things that I wanted to get out of the way before we moved on. <clears throat> so let's just talk real quick about what WordPress is. 
because lots of people talk, hey, you use WordPress, WordPress this, WordPress that. But what I've discovered is that some people don't know what WordPress is. And all that it is is a publishing platform. So if you want to publish something, WordPress lets you do that. In a nutshell, that's what it is. Other features about it is that it's open source. So it's developed by the community of users that use WordPress. They develop it themselves. It's robust. So whether you get five visitors a day or 50,000 visitors a day, WordPress can handle all of that on its own without you having to do anything else to it. And my favorite part is that it's free. So you don't have to pay WordPress a dime for using their software. They just let you use it. Yes, sir. OK, let's say you create the, the website in this publishing platform, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say they go out of business because all the site is stored on that platform, right? You don't have it in your computer, right? That's actually the next place, the next step that I was going to. So thank you for that. So let's just go on to the next. This is how do you get WordPress? How do you use it? You've got two options for that. You can use the WordPress servers themselves. So WordPress will let you use their servers to run your website from it. Just like Google lets you use their servers to host your, your website, uh, WordPress does the same thing. The other option is that you can install WordPress on your own server. So let's just say, for instance, WordPress ceases to be then what will happen is that since you've already installed the software on your server, it'll just stay dead at that level. There won't be any additional development to it. Uh, no new features will be added to it. It just stays at that point, and it just won't advance. I personally don't think that that will happen, just because since WordPress is developed by the users themselves, the users themselves will keep it going. And there will always be some guy in Croatia somewhere like that has nothing better to do that just sits there and will update it anyway. So um, I'm not worried about WordPress per se, the development of WordPress stopping. Um, but I, I prefer it solving it on my own server. And I'll get into that in just a little bit. If I were to download that, put it on my server, put it on my computer at home, periodically I would do that. I assume some kind of message is saying, hey, we've got updates. Yes. WordPress has a built-in function that checks to see if it's the latest version. And uh, for lack of a better term, it calls home and says, hey, I'm version 2.4. What's the latest version? And then the home servers will tell it that 2.5 is, is the latest version. And so it'll give you a little message up at the top that says, hey, you need to update me. Um, so yes, you would get an auto notice. From your, uh, so let's talk about the first deal. If you use their servers, it's called a WordPress.com site. Lots of people have a WordPress.com site, and it's usually, you know, Raphael's blog.wordpress.com. Okay. The, it has some really good advantages in that you don't need to provide your own hosting. It's completely free. You don't pay for the software. You don't pay for hosting. You just use their stuff. And they let you do that. Another advantage is that you don't have to mess with updates. WordPress handles their own updates in the back end. Any plugins, any themes, anything that needs to be updated, they update that themselves for you. You don't ever have to do that. So it's really good if you're a beginner and you're not really sure if you want to do this or not. This is the way to go. Go to WordPress.com, create an account, log in, start using it, see if you like it or not. Um, one of the disadvantages of using their stuff, they restrict your usage of it. So you can't run an e-commerce website from there. So let's say at some point you write an e-book or you write a book and you want to sell it, you can't sell it from there, from the stuff that they host. Um, you have to get your own hosting for that. Since they do all the updates, they limit how many plugins and how many themes you have available to use because they don't want to have to sit there and update them. You know, they only give you a certain number of ones to use. 
This to me is the biggest disadvantage is that your, high, your site lives on their servers. So if they want, they can delete your account whenever they feel like it, with or without notice. So if somebody says, hey, Raphael is spamming me with uh, their stuff, or Raphael is using my stuff without my permission. They write WordPress, WordPress can just shut my site off. And that's it. I got nothing left. So that's a big disadvantage of using WordPress.com. That's why I don't like using that. But it's really good if you're starting out just because it gives you an idea of what all is involved. Yes, sir. And so I, I start out with them, I have the ability at some point to take the whole thing. Yes. Yes. WordPress has the option you can export your file, it'll download it to your computer. And then you go to your new WordPress site, and then you import what you just exported. And it'll take that in. So the best option is you run WordPress on your own server. Okay. This is what you need to ask when you go to the hosting company. Because they'll usually have a Windows server, and they'll have a Linux server, and they'll have a whole list of different things that you can do. It has to be Linux. You have to be able to create MySQL databases, preferably PHP, and cPanel. And I'll show you cPanel in just a little bit. But this is what you, your, your server has to have. And I already talked about these guys. And you'll pay about 5 to $25 or more, depending on the package that you get. Somebody this morning in one of the podcasting deals said that you could get hosting for $3.95 at Bluehost. I don't know about that. Give them a call, find out what the deal is. Um, but you can you can pay you know $150 for your own dedicated server, but you don't have to do that. Yeah. This is about the the, band, the range that you want to be in, five to twenty-five dollars a month for hosting. So of course, the advantages of running WordPress on your own server, you can use whatever plugins you want, whatever themes. You can use it for whatever you want. It's still pretty easy to set up, and it grows with you. So if you have you start off with five, 10 readers, you know, your mom, your uncle, your dad, all people have your same last name, and then a couple other people start reading it, and it grows and gets, you know, you get 100,000 100, people coming to your site a day. It'll grow with you as you move along. This advantage is that you have to pay for hosting. You have to update it yourself. You have to learn a lot of different terms like FTP, upload, download, plugins. You kind of have to have an idea what, about what those things mean. You don't have to know it like a computer science person does, but you have to at least have an understanding of what each of those terms uh, means. Okay. So if you remember nothing else, from this conversation today. Do this immediately after you install WordPress. Delete the default post. WordPress comes with a post that says, hi, hello world, this is a WordPress site. You want to delete that as soon as you're done. There's a default about page that says, this is an example of an about page. You'll either want to change that so that it says something about you, or just delete it altogether and make a new one. You want to install and activate whatever plugins you're planning on using. Install and change the themes. If you're planning on doing that, you want to change your permalinks. Permalink is short for permanent link. By default, WordPress gives you a number for your link. And if you recall earlier, I was talking about having keywords. You want to type your the titles of your posts and everything with the, with a keyword so that WordPress will then create your post with, you know, pittsburghghosttours.com slash locations, for example, or slash tours slash October, for all the October tours. And so, so you want to change that. And of course, get started. And then the most important one is to keep going. One of the disadvantages of a blog is that you have to constantly feed it. And, but you decide how often is constant. So if you update once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, once a day, once an hour, 
it's up to you how often you update it, but you want to keep those updates regular. Because people will come to your site and they'll expect an update every day, and if they don't have an update for one day, it's okay. But the next day, they're wanting an update there. And the longer the site goes without any updates, the less likely people are to come back to it. So you want to just keep continuously updating your site as frequently as you can. So this is where I like to kind Okay, I'm going to show you guys real quick how to come on. Yeah, there's my Twitter. Can you guys see that okay? All right, so we're going to log into my personal blog, into the C panel for my blog. And why can't you open it? And of course, there would be a problem with that. I can't tell if I'm connected to the network. Let's see. All right, so that should work. Chihuahua. Oh yeah. It helps if I can spell my name right. <laughs> so I'm logging into my account. I wanted you guys to see my my login name. So this is my HostGator C panel. Um, depending on what host you get, your page might look a little bit different than this. But basically, I just come down here to Fantastico. And I tell it I want to install a WordPress. And I tell it I want a new installation. And then it asks me, where do you want to install it? So I'm going to have it install it there. It wants me to make an admin name. So I'm going to call it, of course, my favorite name. I give it a password. And then I click Install WordPress. And I tell it to finish. And that's it. It's done. This is what my brand new WordPress website. That's my login screen. So this is my default login. I wonder if I can change the resolution on that. It doesn't look very good. We're going to do 10 by 7. There we go, that's a little better. Okay, so this is my default. I just created a, Word, a WordPress blog. What about your HostGator? On my HostGator account, under my personal domain, right? Can it cancel any time you want to? Yes. In fact, after the session, I'll delete this, and it'll be like it was never there. But this is your default setup. Okay. This is the default uh, thing that I was telling you guys about that you want to delete. Hey, this is your first post. You want to delete that. Um, I'll show you in just a little bit. This is the about page that it creates. This is an example of a WordPress page, blah, blah, blah. This is what it does. I mean, you guys saw it. It took me, what, two minutes, maybe less, to do it? Not counting the time that I was fumbling around trying to remember how to spell my name? 
So this is the site. Now to log in, the URL is always whatever it is, blah, 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 dot com. I could put it in a subdirectory, but you don't have to put it in a subdirectory, but it's slash wp dash hat. It's what it always is. And then I log in. Can you have more than one account on this? Yes. Yes, my, my other regular blog is on the site as well. And this is just another folder. So it's basically a subdomain. So this is called the WordPress dashboard. This is what you always see when you come to the site. I'm sorry, when you log into the admin section. Here's your post. If I click here, Here's my default hello world post thing. Actually, here, let me. So this post is this same post here. And I can either edit it, come in and change it, update. Do -do 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 -do. Come back to the site. Refresh it. Refresh it. And there's the stuff that I just typed in. So the beauty of WordPress is that it's set up, essentially, if you can type an email and send an email, you can update your site and you can update your blog. So just real quick. Let me show you how to delete that post. Just easy as pancakes, click delete right here. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yes. And now it's gone. If I go back to my page here, it'll tell me that nothing was found because I deleted that post. So let's say we want to, I'm going to show you two things real quick. So let's talk about updating something here, okay? So I'm going to title my post. Then I'm going to write in here some text. Okay, this is my new first blog post. But this is kind of boring, right? So let's say I want to add a picture to it. Up here are the easy buttons for you to upload pictures and uh, video, audio, and what have you. So here the image comes through here, it's telling me, hey, hit the file. And let's see. Where's the picture now? I have a picture. It uploads it. After it's done, it'll ask me. Hey, if you want to make any changes to the picture, I can add a description, captions, anything else to it. I just click insert the post, and there's a picture of my post. I publish it. Because WordPress is a publishing platform. And then I come over here, I refresh, and there's my post with a picture in it. And it's just that easy. And if you're doing an audio file, if you're doing a video file, it's the exact same steps. People click, click, click. Comments on this, right? Yes. And this will be available off of my off my website. Either it'll be on marketinglatinos.com slash podcamp. Sorry if I'm rushing a little bit. I'm, I went a little long. I'm kind of long-winded at times. Um, okay, so that's a post. Okay. So let's talk about, let's say I don't like how this looks, right? It's kind of plain, it's kind of boring. So I want to change the theme of the website and how my website looks. Come over here to Appearance. Add a new theme. And uh, I'll just choose the recently updated themes for the sake of speed. And these are all of the themes that have been recently updated 
I don't know what they mean by recently updated. I don't know if it means like within the last month or the last hour or the last year. So let's say I like this theme. But then let me make sure that I like it. So I preview. Kind of shows me what it's supposed to look like. Eh, you know, I'm not too crazy about that color splash in the background. But anyway, let's just use that for the sake of simplicity. I click install, install now. WordPress installs it for me. I click here on activate. My new theme is now active. And if I come back to my website, I refresh. Hey, look at what my website looks like now. Point click. Now I have a whole new look and feel to my site. I do all sorts of other things to it. Um, you know, but that's just, just a quick and dirty example. I so, think the thing about WordPress is that when you go search those themes, you can search them for like if you're a photographer, they have specific themes that highlight pictures. If you're a music person, they'll have themes that are specifically geared toward people with music. So depending on your media type, they have themes specifically. Just for that. Yeah, you just most of them are free. Some of them you do have to pay for. I personally don't like to buy things, and this is why. I found that if I buy a theme, I'm stuck with it. So if I put it up on my site and I don't like it, like I'm not really crazy about these color splashes in the background, and if I can't change that, then there's no problem. I just activate another theme, right? And I'm not out any money. But if I pay 30 bucks or 100 bucks for that theme, I'm stuck with it. And now I'm going to have to use it because I paid a hundred dollars, and that's that's why I don't like to buy themes. But that's just me. There are some themes that are worth the money, like thesis. There's one theme that's worth the money. It's eighty something dollars. Um, it's I mean you can do all kinds of things to thesis. 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 It's like like for graduate school thesis, just like that. And you can change that theme up and down, left and right. That'd be about the only thing that I would pay money for. Um, but unless you do some coding, I'd do my Yeah, but if you do, if you learn a little bit of coding, you can pretty much modify anything to work and function the way that you want it to. All right, so that's themes. Quick and dirty about plugins. Okay, so what plugins are, they're little programs that expand the functionality of WordPress. So, WordPress on its own doesn't check for spam. So it has a plugin called the Kismet that lets you delete spam automatically on your server. So people can come and leave you spam comments. Um, what will happen is that people have bots out there that uh, look for blogs that don't have empty spam installed. And they'll leave you 50, 60 comments in a row about Viagra, about Seattle's about you name it, we'll have 50 to 60 comments in there. And it's every day. For everyone that you delete, you'll get another one. You put a kiss in there, and that's it. You don't ever have to deal with that again. And the kiss comes with WordPress. I don't know why they haven't just integrated it into WordPress, but it's one of the plugins that comes in there. Uh, I'll just show you real quick how to activate one, because it's really complicated. That's it. So what this does is that it puts, what Hello Dolly does, it puts this little line from the song Hello Dolly into all of your pages. So when you go to another page, it, it's, it took me forever to figure out what Hello Dolly is. You're looking swell, Dolly. So anytime you load up another page, it has another snippet of the song. <laughs> you know, so it's silly stuff like this to more heavy duty stuff like uh, allowing you to post videos straight off of YouTube onto your site by just putting YouTube and then the video name. Um, Flickr. Flickr plugins, if you have a lot of pictures on Flickr, you can update your pictures on Flickr and then it automatically updates onto your WordPress blog without you having to do anything. Uh, Twitter feeds, all that stuff, it'll automatically do it. Copyrights, posting features. Yes and no. 
I generally, know, people. Yes. I remember the last, uh, last Tuesday, the England flight Yes. You're not supposed to quarantine for the but that I do simple shot, simple. I mean, now what I'm going to use it, I want to sell it. And I bought something like this. Let me answer that one this way. It's up to you. I don't, I don't understand copyright law, right? I'm not a lawyer. I don't know how that works. But my understanding is that if it's for non commercial purposes, for personal use, you can do that. Now, some copyright or patent lawyer might say, well, once you put it up on the website, it's for public use and it's no longer personal, so blah, blah, blah. But really what they'll probably do is just send you a letter saying, hey, you got to put this down. Take this down or else we're going to do more serious stuff. You need to take it down. Let me show you something real quick here about things that you can do with plugins. And this is just on my personal side. Plugins let you add AdSense code. They let you add this friend feed here. These are your plugins. And then these things down here, you can modify these two plugins as well. So you can make your site look like that versus the plain Jane website that we had before. Which is that? Oh, they come. Let me show you real quick. They come. There's two places that you can get them. That you can come here to uh, plugins, add a new plugin, and you can just search by popular, by um, the newest, by what have you. You can also, there's a search field. So if you know what it's called, you can just type in the search, the name of it, and you can search for it like that. If you're not really sure, these tags down here will help you figure out, you know, like if you want plugins that say Google, that are related to Google or Google search or something, just click there. And these are all different Google plugins that'll do something with Google. And uh, let's say, for instance, I'm just going to pick this one. If I want to install it, just install. It gives me up a window that tells me a little bit about it. This is what it is. This is what it does. This is blah, 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 blah. Some of these have more information than others. Install now. And that's it. And then if I want to activate it, it's active. We have a plugin to manage users. You want to have some users that have secret information? Yes. Yes. They're called the membership plugins. Plugins are one thing that will cost you money. For sure. Um, there are membership plugins that are free and there's some that, that'll cost you. Like there's there's two that I'm thinking of. Member Wing, I think is $99. And there's another one. A member or something like that is $99. And they'll let you have all different settings for your uh, for your blog if you want to have different members. Uh, some of them will let you use certain functions for free, but if you want to use all the functions, then you have to pay. But, uh, but yes, you can set that up so that, like, you know, if you have free subscribers, hey, you know, free subscribers get to watch the first two minutes of your video, but then after that, they have to pay. You can have a plugin that handles that for you. Or if you want to just do it, subscribe, and then the first week, somebody gets one plugin, then the next week, they get another. I'm sorry, in the first week, they get one video, the next week, they get another video, and, next, and so on. Plugin will handle that for you, too. And just real quick, uh, where am I at? If you want some more info, or if you want to download these slides or anything like that, they are here. And one last thing I want to show you guys. You can update your WordPress site from your iPhone, if you have an iPhone, or your Blackberry even. Uh, the iPhone has a little WordPress app. Install it, type your thing, post, click, off it goes. If you take a picture, you can take a picture with it, update it, and it'll upload it to your site on its own. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but I didn't write a single code of HTML. 
All I did was point and click, and that's one of my favorite things about WordPress. If you want to, you can write all the HTML you want, but you don't have to do anything. So the more info, just go there, I'll have the slides, I'll have a resource list, I'll have probably this video that I shot with this little camera will be on there. And uh, I also have a WordPress course, if you guys want to take it, um, I'll let you guys have it for free. I just want to charge money for it, but you guys can get it for free, you just go there. Sorry, <laughs> it's time. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.